So I think it depends on where the customer is coming from. So if the customer's already kind of bought into uh, Azure AI Studio and using things like Promptflow, mm -hmm. for me, the story is pretty simple at that point. Mm -hmm. So you can pull up Promptflow and show their like different connected graphs. And the problem with it is it's the same every time. You can't dynamically choose, oh, in this situation, I'm going to uh, pull data from the shopping cart database. Uh, in this and other scenario, I want to pull information from the HR database. There's no dynamic nature to prompt flow. And mm -hmm. if you want to do that, you need some kind of orchestrator in the middle of your prompt flow flow, whether that's Langchain or something like Semantic Kernel, right? Mm -hmm. You'll need an SDK like that. Um, and so that, that should be like point number one. Mm -hmm. The next question is, okay, so now that I know that I need an SDK like Langchain or Semantic Kernel to orchestrate mm -hmm. my my tool to do things like function calling to start creating automation inside mm -hmm. of prompt flows, inside mm -hmm. Azure AI Studio, why the hell would I use something like Semantic Kernel over Langchain that all of my friends are telling me is the coolest thing since sliced bread, right? Mm -hmm. And I really think it has to, and we have some updated pictures on this we'll have to share. It okay. has everything to do with how we've architected Semantic Kernel. Mm -hmm. With Semantic Kernel, we have created this concept called Kernel. It's in the name. And it has everything inside of it, right? We use it to select which AI service, so you can have different models. So hey, for an easy task, we might do 3.5 Turbo. For more complex type tasks, we might do four. We do prompt rendering with templates. We mm -hmm. actually make the calls to different models, we parse the responses, and then we send the, whatever results back to the application. Um, and all of that, again, is all centralized inside of this thing that we call the kernel. Now, if that's all we did, yeah, like it, we wouldn't be all that much better than than Langchain. But because, because we are able to put all of this side thing inside of a single kernel mm -hmm. that can be defined once in your application, it means Quite a few different things. One, it's reproducible. You define your kernel once with all of your different models that can be selected, all of your different settings, uh, all of your different uh, prompts and, and plugins. You define it once so that it, you don't have a bunch of spaghetti code inside of your application where all these things are defined in different places. It's in one object and through dependency injection, mm -hmm. be guaranteed that this thing goes everywhere inside of your application. And if your AI researchers realize you have a better model or better settings, mm -hmm. you don't change it in five different places, you change it in one. Mm -hmm. Value number one. Value number two is this line right here, event notifications. Mm -hmm. Customers are scared of AI because mm -hmm. it's unpredictable, it does weird things, mm -hmm. and it potentially it might do evil or wrong things, right? Mm -hmm. But because, because we put everything inside of the kernel, it means you have one spot to do all of your observability. Every single one of these steps in this chain emits events. And so that as an app developer, as a company, that means there's one spot for me to have a magnifying glass and look and go, hey, is the AI doing something wrong? Is it doing something evil? Is it costing me a lot of money? Mm -hmm. Instead of, having to put magnifying glasses on all of these different parts, right? Because that's what Langchain does, right? If we look at how Langchain does their code, you define your code, you have to uh, 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 define, uh, actually describe it so that the model understands it. You create a template, and then you do this like really scary thing where you actually have to wire everything up with, uh, they call it LCEL, they had to come up with an acronym on how you combine all these different pieces, right? You're manually wiring the stuff together. And when you're dealing with an enterprise application, probably every single one of your files, every single one of your uh, bits of code has some sort of manually created pipeline that creates an agent that you can then talk to, right? So if, if, if you find out something's wrong, you're having to update all of this very difficult to read code in a bunch of different places. With semantic kernel though, because we've added everything into the kernel, you can see we, we just build this tiny little kernel that has the model and the plugin. Mm -hmm. This can go everywhere in the application now, and we can just easily invoke it with a prompt, right? Okay. 
Oh. And this is only possible because we architected it with the kernel first instead mm -hmm. of requiring you to wire everything up yourself. And because, again, it's all inside of one kernel, there is one place. You just say kernel dot event name. And you can put a watcher. You can observe. You can see what the AI is doing so that you can make sure that it's not doing something wrong. So that that is why I believe semantic kernel is an ultimately better architecture, especially in the enterprise space than something like Langchain.